Namaste. Do you know Namaste is made up of two syllables? I know you can hear the sound Namaste. So Nama means I offer completely myself. I offer completely myself, all my ego, all my duality and a conflict. And then what is left? Only you. And you are the peace, happiness, love, truth, and wisdom. So in fact, we both realize <coughs> that we both are essentially one at the highest level, not at the physical level, not at the mental level, but at the spiritual level, our essence is the same. Our existence is the same of peace, happiness, love, truth, and wisdom. That is why I always <laughs> do namaste. It is creating a pattern or it is creating an attitude in the mind. And I told you, attitude has two components, a cognitive thought process associated with an emotion. Last time I discussed, I'm in stress. I cannot stop laughing. I cannot laugh while I'm saying that I'm in stress, I'm depressed. So that thought is associated with an emotion, negative emotion. I'm happy. It is associated with a positive emotion. So if I think in the right way, in tune with what the real self is, it gets associated with the right emotion and that drops our sheep mind. I talked about it, that drops our sheep mind, our angry mind, our, dis our strong likes and dislikes mind, our uh, cognitive biased mind, monkey mind. And when these minds are dropped, what is the result? Can you ever imagine? <clears throat> no situation, no person, no relationship, no time can ever make you enter into the any kind of stress upset or emotional dependency. In those moments, in those moments, the real self reveals itself in peace, happiness, love, truth, and wisdom. That is the karma yoga we are talking about. Just close your eyes. Eyes are closed. Find out the right place for your body. Right place is the way you are sitting in a particular place, couch or floor or chair. Check that you are aware of the space all around your body. That is the place. And the position of the body. And posture. The posture is at ease. It means the body is at ease. Why we are saying, you know, I'm passing on the thought to you and you follow those instructions and your mind starts moving within. When it moves within, which is, otherwise the mind was scattered outside. So what happens, you raise your level of awareness. Did you do anything to raise your level of awareness? No. So when you get upset, can you raise your level of awareness? If yes, you are a great seeker, we have to complete 40 steps to the journey of the self-discovery, and we are in the second step of Karma Yoga. So now, next step is being comfortable.
And I said, in being comfortable is so simple. You're not doing anything. What you're saying, you're looking at the neck joint. You go deep into the root of the neck joint. Means what? We are helping the mind to go within. and you experience the sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Without doing anything, please, more and more you repeat the practice, the time will come, you realize, you will realize that the journey to the self-discovery is easy, natural, flawless, without any effort. Why there is an effort? Because of the different states of the mind I discussed in the last session. And in today's session, we will understand how to get rid of those different states of the mind. Moving the mind inside the shoulder joints being there, feeling sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Moving the mind inside, moving the mind inside, the hip joint. So this is an educating the mind, how to move the mind at a subtler level inside means from outside to inside, means what? You raise your level of awareness and experience the sensation, comfort and steadiness. Now being carefree. No, but before, oh, awareness of the entire body being there, feeling sensation, comfort, and steadiness. In that state of being comfortable, be carefree, free from all the cares of the mind. Now, how the mind cares? Mind cares by the thought, feeling, and emotions that is already accumulated for many years from this birth, from the last previous birth. How can I say that? <clears throat> you had a strong dislike for a person and it happened last year. And that guy appears before you today. What happens to your mind? I don't know. I, I, I dislike that guy. That is how the mind cares. So should the mind care like this? No. But why the mind cares like this? <clears throat> because I subjectify that disliking for a person. I become the dislike, so I carry forward that emotion of dislike or attachment or anger or reaction for how many days, weeks, months, and years? No end. Even when we are on the deathbed, I hate that guy, the mind recalls. We have to be carefree from these thought, feeling, emotions, past impressions. That is the meaning of being carefree. And it is the easiest thing to do and it is the most difficult. Easiest, you watch these thoughts coming and going. You watch and we watch these emotions coming and going.
how you watch when you watch there are two things i watch you i see you it means you are different than me so be, by being carefree we experience that separation between the thought feeling and you so what happens you are carefree you become calm and relaxed so thoughts are coming and going. You are simply observing. So who is observing is a knower, is an observer. And what you are observing is a thought plus emotion. And that thought plus emotion is separate. As I see you, you are separate from you. As I observe you, you are separate from me. So the thought and feelings are separate from me. And that is why I have given a couple of metaphors. What is that metaphor? I gave a metaphor of traffic on the road and you are standing across so you see you are different from the traffic you are different from the mental traffic you are different from the mental traffic of thought feeling and emotions you see it clearly when you see it clearly without doing anything you are carefree <clears throat> What happens in being carefree that you see the storm just outside your home and you are inside the home and still calm and relaxed. So that door that you have closed is a separation. So when I separate, when I see that thought, feeling and emotions are separate from me, I am already relaxed. Why I am already relaxed? Pay attention, my friend. You told me that you listened to a particular talk carefully and you entered into peace and carefully in the state of being carefree. So every time you listen to the talk carefully, you will change, you will transform, my friend. that state And in that state, you look at the head and the neck. You are simply looking, I'm saying, as if we can look at a thing only at a distance. When we look at a thing at a distance, we are separate from it. So when you look at the head and the neck and you experience the sensation, relaxation and stillness. Look at the right arm. Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Look at the left leg. Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Look at the right leg. You are looking at it? distance 
and you experience the sensation, relaxation instance. You look at the right arm. Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. You look at the left arm. <clears throat> Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. You look at the middle portion of the body, sensation, relaxation, and stillness. The entire body. Now you see you did nothing and you are calm, relaxed, and still. That is the power of the Eastern wisdom. If we have a higher, deeper, and clear understanding, you need not to do anything. You just become aware and you enter into that state. But if it doesn't happen, oh, the mind is crazy, lazy, and obsessed. I have to explore it. I have to drop it. And you can still enter into that state looking at the breath now. So again, I'm saying you're looking at the breath, you always look at a distance. So what you see, the breath is going in and out. You feel the sensation of the breath. You do not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath because you are not doing anything, you're just seeing. Seeing is not doing anything. And in that seeing you separate, you see the knower and the observer is different from the observed. And that leaves you in the state of calmness and peace. In that state of higher awareness, then you listen to the talk, it has its impact. Open your eyes, maintain that state with a calmness and peace. We understood in the last session, Karma Yoga is recognizing the false notion of being a self-made man, if you remember, the way I told you last year, you saw a person and you hated it. And this year, when you met that person, that hated becomes alive. Can the last session become alive while listening to me? <laughs> that is why I say you have to do a repeat listening. Negative impact is so fast, hard to erase. Positive impact needs an effort that you repeat it again and again. So last time we talked, being a self-made man makes me selfish. Selfish means that um, I have an attachment and detachment, strong likes and dislikes. I have a hatred and jealousy and delusion. I'm a consumer. Karma Yoga changes everything. I have to become unselfish. I have to drop this attachment, detachment, duality, and a conflict. But why I have to drop it? So I can drop all those different states of the mind. Do you remember the sheep mind, monkey mind, cognitive bias mind, rationalized mind, strong likes and dislikes mind? So when they are dropped, what happens? Mind is clear. You are in peace. Nobody dares to make you upset, depressed, and anxious. Karma Yoga is also dropping, dissolving, and destroying the false notion, ideas about yourself. We also discussed in the last session that 
whenever I fall prey to these different states of the mind, you just start thinking, what is my place in time and the space? I'm totally insignificant. I'm not even a dust particle as compared to the entire space. Forget about that entire universe. I am thousand and thousand times smaller than my house, than my township, than my county, than my state. What to talk about this universe? In the same thing, 100 years of the life maximum or 150 years? That 150 years is nothing as compared to the billions of years of the existence of the earth. And in that such as insignificant, why we, we, we have to think like this? When you become insignificant, when you think like this, your ego crushes. So your laziness, craziness, or getting obsessed drops. <clears throat> Karma Yoga is also develop an attitude in the mind to purify the mind. That is what. So we understood, we understood how each states of the mind, which is nothing but a delusion, causes the suffering, the money mind. I explained it, I'm not repeating it. So sheep mind, uh, monkey mind, rationalized mind, cognitive biased mind, and uh, stressed and angry mind, like and dislike mind, <coughs> yeah, like and dislike mind, or you can say mood swing mind, depressed mind, grandiose mind, you know, different states. So when I change the attitude, again, remember, when I start thinking, I feel the change in the emotion. Attitude, conscious thinking, plus feeling changes the state of the mind. It, so what happens in the money mind? What is the attitude? When the attitude changes? I am earning money for physical survival. I'm not earning money for peace and happiness because money cannot buy happiness. And I'm earning money by contributing my talent and capacities, my effort. I don't have an intention of consumership. I have a noble cause, I'm contributing. You have a thought, you have a feeling. So what happens to the feeling? A feeling of contentment comes. A sense of equanimity takes over your life, your mind. Money mind has changed. You're doing the same thing. You're doing your own work. You're cooking uh, your food in the kitchen, you are preparing a cup of tea in the kitchen, you are cleaning your house, but your attitude inside, I'm contributing to the cleanliness. That is the beauty of the Karma Yoga. I'm making it very simple, pragmatic and practical. Looking at the sheep mind, I explained you. So what should be the attitude in the whenever mind is having a sheep mind? I gave an example that, no, no, anger is there. I have to release it. Do you remember? So that is a sheep mind. I, I follow blindly. I don't inquire. So what is my attitude towards the sheep mind? Let me independently analyze let me have an independent analysis. Let me think it over before I get carried away by the sheep mind. So what happens? You raise your level of awareness. 
So what exactly is the thought? You question what is the evidence that releasing the anger is better than, for example, releasing the anger is better than suppressing. But better than both is the sublimation. I never think of it. Why? Because of the sheep mind. So what happens, but if you get rid of the sheep mind, you have an intellectual humility. You are seeking the real behind the sheep mind and the life changing. When dear and dead, you are upset, it changes the next moment. That is the power of karma yoga, monkey mind. Monkey mind distracted. I have multiple thoughts. Force your mind, let me focus, even on anything. At that moment, when your mind is distracted and it is acting like a monkey. What do you mean? Focus on anything. Whatever is there on the wall. Or just close your eye, focus on the breath. Or focus on something peaceful. Why do I have to get rid of this monkey mind? What should be the thought? You tell your mind, I need, I deserve full attention now. Because it is a monkey mind, it will pick up any thought of strong likes and dislikes, and it will cause a lot of challenges to me. So I don't want to continue with the monkey mind. Does that make sense? <laughs> it is very playful, my friend. Don't overburden yourself with these principles. So the moment, even if you focus for a few seconds and few minutes, that flow of the mind going into a particular direction, it drops that likes and dislikes all the different states of the mind. It drops the sheep mind, drops the monkey mind, drops on the money mind, etc., etc. Lock likes and dislikes mind. Pragmatic. I'm saying pragmatic, practical. When to apply any time in your life. Where to apply in all the situation. Whether you are with a person, or in a situation, or in relationship. Rationalized mind is a very dangerous mind. I believe I create a notion without cause and effect. There is no cause, and I hate this guy. Give me three benefits of hating the guy. There must be cause and effect. You continue to suffer, and that guy is sleeping. Whether it's your relations or a person. Do you see the example of a rationalized mind? Why should I? Your mind, you challenge the mind. Why should you hate or like or dislike or react? Or forget about it. It has no benefit at all. I cannot even count one benefit. This is the thought is going to change your emotion. And every time it becomes a learning lesson in your life. And if you repeat it continuously for about a month, you have changed. You have succeeded in karma yoga. It demands courage. It demands a moral responsibility. It demands a self-honesty. What is the self-honesty? Why the hell I should like, dislike, react to somebody? Let me enjoy my life. Why should I keep any person with a hatred, like, and dislike in my head? not worth not deserving. These are the thoughts you have to think. Cognitive bias mind. Biased, you know, I create a bias. And that is based on stereotypes. So the moment I have a cognitive biased Mind means I have a particular thought and I challenge that thought inside my head. I will consciously reflect 
first on my biases. So you simply say to yourself, let me think it over. I, I understand that statement and I see the content of biases in that. The moment you say your depression will go away, anxiety will go away there and then I can bet you. You'll start smiling. You'll have a big laugh. Why? Because you got rid of the cognitive bias mind. I can bet you. My friend, it is possible. 100% possible. It was made possible by hundreds of masters, thousands of masters. They followed these simple principles. Stressed mind. Upset mind. So the stressed mind, the upset mind overwhelms you. And at that moment, you pause for a moment, you take a deep breath, and you say, where is the peace inside, which is my essential nature? You start looking inside, bypassing those thoughts of depression and getting upset, you are, you are already changed. How long it has taken? Fraction of a millisecond. The moment you have started thinking, it associated with the emotion that also changes and you are free. How dare you ask your mind, how dare you get upset? You had 10 hours of this sleep today. And in the morning you wake up and you get upset. How dare you? What is the problem? Conscious thinking. Strong likes and dislikes. When your mind is overloaded with the likes and dislikes, it doesn't give you a space for the peace and the calmness, and you get rid of these likes and dislikes, and mind is free. Yes, mind is free. Depressed mind, mood swing mind. Uh, take other examples of the mood swing mind. That is what happens, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you had a good sleep and you had a good food, your digestion, body is also right. Uh, I am, I'm upset. Mood swing. So when the mood swing is there and the thought is there that you are upset and you get associated with the emotion of the upset, it makes you reckless and you make a reckless choices. So you simply, oh, depressed mind, I had a good sleep, I, good, I had a good moment, and still my mind feels upset, mind, mind, what happened to you? Instead of the depressed mind dragging you down, you rise up by moving the mind within. Let me move the mind within first. Okay, okay I, I believe you that you are depressed mind. Let me move the mind within. Gone. Depressed mind, grandiose mind, grandiose mind, you know, we, we inflate our ego in certain situations. Like this. So I have to, I discussed again and again, I'm repeating, attitude is equal to a cognitive, have cognitive thoughts as well as an emotional component. So by intentionally changing the thought in the intellect, I change the mindset means I change the emotion. And there is an attitudinal shift when, there and then. I reflect on the drawbacks of current attitude and benefits of more constructive ones creates motivation and willingness to change. Karma Yoga. We are still in the second step out of the 40 steps. Questioning. Are you question 
don't believe as it is, whatever the thought comes, I'm stressed, you know, I feel stressed. Question long held assumptions. Can I point you the long held assumptions? You have written a couple of times how long it will take me to get rid of the anxiety. There is no anxiety at all in you. But you believe so. You create that thought. Associate with that emotion. Questioning long held assumption, biases and patterns through reasoning. Attitude, thought process. You start thinking in a different way. Learning to recognize and dispute your irrational and unhealthy attitude. You rationalize mind, you mood swing mind, you strong likes and this. They are all <coughs> irrational thinking. Why? Give me three benefits of hating someone. I have to broaden the vision through inspirational ideas, these principles which I am talking about. Setting clear intention. Do you want to know? Let us see. Let us see. Uh, there are many ways to do it, but you know, in a modern language, I can say you slow down whenever you are upset, or you have those different states of the mind. Breathe deeply. Don't react immediately. These are, you know, the, even though it appears as a pragmatic approach, but there is no clarity inside my mind. So even if I breathe deeply, I may relax for a while, but my mind goes back to those same depressing thoughts. So we have to work practically, and there the karma yoga comes. Challenge the negative thought process. Easier said than done. We will understand that how to challenge that. Stay focused on solutions rather than getting carried away by repeating the problem in your mind. You see, rationalize mind. Shift your perspective. You know, these are very practical approaches modern uh, psychology gives, but Karma Yoga gives you the real life solution, real time solution, real life solution. Set boundaries. You know, we just talk about the set boundaries. When the mind lives into those states, how can you set the boundaries? How can you set the boundaries of a depressed mind? Strong likes and dislikes mind. It, it keeps on boiling inside. Take a break. The more you take a break, the more thoughts enters into your mind. So it appears more philosophical than pragmatic and practical approach. So now we are going to have a very practical, real-life, real-time solution. Take an example of money-mindedness. I'm fully busy. I'm always reactive. I have an attitude of being a consumer. So my master used to say that when you have a thought of being money-mindedness, you reflect on the contentment from simple living over chasing wealth for status. So what is that money-mindedness has an element? The mind is obsessed that this money will buy happiness and peace. That is why we are money-minded. So what should I do? There are many ways. First is recognizing that money cannot buy happiness. No relationship, no harmony, no love is possible. Even if you pay millions of dollars and, or I pay you millions of dollars, and, but I don't have. <laughs> so second point. So I, I remember, <clears throat> third point. I reflect on the temporary nature of the wealth. Wealth comes to go.
But if you keep the wealth not to go, you become a miser. The miser, miserable mind. It gives you more problems. Means you don't see that I will consume all the wealth, but I will earn the wealth to contribute for the sake of my physical survival. But, but where lies the problem? Money-mindedness. <clears throat> where is the wealth? Outside. Clear? And where is the problem? Inside the mind. <laughs> Are you getting it? Money-mindedness. I have to think in this way. <clears throat> oh, where is the wealth? Wealth is outside. In my bank, or in my safe, or in my house, or in my car, or in my wallet. And where is the problem? It is inside the mind. Answer me the question. Who has the problem? The wealth outside or me? Are you clear? If you do not, if you do not, if you do not understand, write to me. Tell me. Ask me the question. What I said, money-mindedness, where the focus is? Outside, me. Where it is? On the wealth. Where is the problem inside the mind? Who has the problem? I. Mind has a problem, but I feel I have a problem. But why? I subjectified the wealth. Means I, mind, I thought subjectifies the wealth and that is why I feel I have a problem. Where, what to do and how to do? Objectify it by thinking and feeling. Attitude. Wealth is outside. Wealth cannot buy peace and happiness. Wealth is temporary. Wealth is to contribute. Wealth, the idea of the wealth to buy happiness is inside the mind and I'm unnecessarily stressed. What happens to you? Result, calmlessness, calmness, sorry. Not calmlessness, calmness, joy, here and now. This is the way I have to think. Thinking, first step of the attitude. Then as you think, you spring the right emotion. Then you are fully busy, no, you are relaxed. You know your talents and capacities, so you will continue to work and finish. Result, calmness. So what we have done in Karma Yoga, I've changed the attitude. So how I change the attitude? I recognize my where my focus is. My focus is to, for example, my focus is on the expensive car, fantasizing about a luxury vacation, going to press coat and enjoy. No, you should enjoy here and now. And then you continue to enjoy going to the press coat. You stay there, you continue to enjoy and you return and you continue to enjoy. <laughs> you know, you recognize the focus. My focus, if it is outside, Press coat will give me the peace and happiness. I have the enough money and I'm driving. I'm crazy lazy. Another way to understand. So identify the inner problem. Don't focus on outside. Shift your attention. Where is the problem? Problem is in the mind. Problem is not in the money. Now, if we are money mindedness, I'm just giving an example. No, no, but, uh, but, but what is the problem inside my mind? I'm attached to the money. I'm obsessed with the money. 
The money will buy the pleasure and happiness. It is a source of happiness and status. I subjectified it rather than I see it objectively. See that the one with the problem is, now you see the problem? I am the problem? No, because of the attachment of the mind to the money causes the delusion of seeking happiness from the wealth. So I am independent. Yes, I'm independent. What happens to you? Even listening to it. What is the solution? Objectify the wealth using thoughtful reflection and offering. Oh, this money belongs to the universe. It comes from that same existence and it goes to the same universe exchange. I'm a contributor. I'm calm and relaxed. Result, I experience the calmness, contentment in that moment when I shift my inner perspective. I shift my Perspective, how I shift my inner perspective by thinking consciously. I feel more peaceful and content. So I realize that chasing outer wealth seems less important to me for living in peace. I trust real happiness comes from within and that inner peace was disturbed, not disturbed. Inner peace was already there, but it was veiled by the attachment of the mind to the wealth. I give you a physical example. Let us take a more subtle mental, emotional example against anger and hesitated mind. Yeah, we should understand it practically. Real life, real time example. <laughs> so whenever you are upset, you have to think in this way. You think in this way, you need not to do the practice, you are already there. No, no, it is not possible, it is not easy. Cognitive bias mind, you have to challenge it. Rationalize mind. <laughs> so against the anger and hesitated mind, where the focus is? I'm angry or upset or hesitated, where the focus is. The focus is outside on a situation, on a person, on a people, on a relationship. But why there is a focus outside? Because my desire and expectation is not fulfilled. Two point. And did you understand where the problem is? But I feel the problem inside. What? My focus is outside, but the problem is inside. I'm trying to solve this hesitation and angry mind outside, but the problem is inside. <laughs> Do you see that? Who has the problem now? Same question. Who has the problem? Me. Why I have a problem? That mind focused outside, created a strong hatred and a liking created a veil over the real I. So the false I is created and false I says I'm angry and I'm hesitated because of you. I subjectified the situation person. <laughs> I subjectified the situation in a person and then I'm getting worried. Unnecessarily. What? So if I drop the expectations from a situation, from a person, what happens then? Problem remains inside my, uh, inside me? No. What will happen? The mind will drop ego, anger and hesitation. When? There and then. You need not to relax to be angry. The anger and hesitation are evaporated. Upset getting evaporated, sublimated. You need not to suppress or 
release your anger or hesitation. It is sublimated. What to do and how to do. That's what we are talking about. <laughs> you know, mind ask, you know, raise the doubt. What to do and how. That's what we are doing. We are thinking. Thinking and changing the attitude. I objectify by thinking and feeling. I separated the person in a situation in a relationship from me, so my ego is gone. How? I changed my attitude. What will happen? At a higher level of a seeker, if you were angry over someone and you still feel hesitated, you went through the entire process And if you are a higher level of a seeker, even if the other person is wrong, you realize your anger and hesitation and upset is wrong. You call that person, you go to that person, you say sorry, even if you are 100% right and other is wrong because you realize your anger, your hesitation gives you no benefit. That was the wrong thing. You were rationalized it. And I can bet you, when you say sorry out of the humility, you raise your level of awareness. Your mind thrills with the calmness and the joy. That is what the humility is. Understand in a different way, who is getting angry? It is my ego self, my I. Ego does not know in doing any action where what benefit. Ego just goes by itself. What is the root cause? Is the real cause of anger outside situation or, or people? No. It is inside me. Source of anger lies in my own unfulfilled desires and expectations. It starts inside the mind. No, no, but, uh, but I want to know when the anger, hesitation or upset arise. Or it means in what scenario does anger frequently or upset shows up to me when something blocks what I want. It may happen below the conscious level. It may happen at the non-thinking level when you get upset. When something blocks what I want, when people don't behave as I expect them to. So I, I cause is still outside. What does anger takes me? Where does upset takes me? Did you ever think of it? You wake up in the morning and you're upset. Where did you think? Did you question? <clears throat> Mind you're upset. Very good. So where this upset will take me to? Or it means when I hold my anger and resentment, where does it ultimately lead? It lead me to more pain, strained relationship destructive reactions that I later regret. Now, so, so should I release it? I'm saying sublimation. I'm saying dropping it. Why drop the ang anger, hesitation or upset? How would it help me to let go of the anger narrative about others' wrongdoing, unfulfilled expectation. Dropping my story of anger and upset would end the uh, mental hesitation. I drop it. it. How can I drop it? It doesn't belong to me. How can I transmute anger? Transmute. What means, what practical mental and emotional shifts can help me. I have just, that is what I have been talking.
I subjectified my anger, my upset, and that hide it. That hides the real I. And I'm unnecessarily creating challenges to me. So recognize where the focus is of the getting upset, of anger, of hesitation. See the inner problem. My focus is outside, but my problem is inside. Are you understanding, my friend? I'm saying in a very simple language. So when I see the problem is inside my mind, I admit my responsibility. Who owns this anger? Do you own my anger? Do you own my being upset? Answer is no. So when I say I own my anger, that is the false I. So the mind cooked a story, created an anger, hesitation, and upset, you drop it. Drop the story of an anger and a getting agitated. What is the story? Uh, he should not have spoken like this. I demand an apology for this insult. He. Think, my friend, think, think, think. What is the way? Change your attitude. What we have been thinking. This is what we have been doing it. Unnecessarily, again, you are asking. <laughs> this is what we have been doing. Change the attitude. So when you change that attitude by consciously thinking, your emotion changes. You consciously, you release, you evaporate it. Your hesitation, your upset, your anger. Now you don't see the situation with ego perspective. You see the shape. You, you, you have already shifted your emotion. But that is not the end of the story. If that happens, you should take a reconciliatory action. Because people have seen you. You were angry. You were upset. So you have to take a reconciliatory action. You can apologize. You can move with the humility to that person. You know, my crazy mind got upset, not because of you, but because of itself. I am really sorry. And I know I have to change my mind. It demands a crushing of your ego. Then only you can talk about it. Otherwise, you cannot say. And that is the, that is the attitude of a higher and a higher seeker. So what is going to happen? You moved out of the humility. You, you created a goodwill. You created an understanding. You replace that agitated situation into, 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 an, into an humble, into an equanimity in the joy, and the life changes. My friend, that is the, that is the, Secret of Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga. Attitude. Two components. Thought process. You restart thinking. Ah, I never thought you will insult me like this. Thought. You now you change. Why you change? Person is outside. Insert is inside. I subjectified. So first let me change that thought process before I settle the score with the other person. But as you start settling the score with the other person by doing the changing the attitude, you will say, I'm sorry. You move with the humility and your life changes completely. Beauty of the second step, the karma yoga with reference to the step one. We have understood the real self. We will continue with the Karma Yoga. I'll make it more, um, more pragmatic and more realistic approach. That is all. Thank you very much, my friend.